In this video, we will be answering a worksheet on radioactivity. Um, the lesson is connected to um, the topic on atoms, um, the values, how to compute for atomic number, atomic mass, um, the relevance of protons, neutrons, and other relevant um, particles that comprise the simple atom. So, yeah, so, uh, we have to first ask ourselves what an atom is. Um, it's everything. Everything is made of matter. Um, matter is made of atoms. Um, this particular concept is um, being taught in um, particular fields from physicists, astronomers, chemists, and cosmologists. Um, you do have to know that um, one atomic mass, the atomic mass is equal to um, basically the nucleus. Since proton and neutron, sorry, uh, these green particles in this illustration um, mean the protons, while the, these um, blue particles comprise the neutron. So they basically make up the nucleus, and these violet um, particles are the electrons. Um, obviously, by the minus sign, you could already see that it's a neutron, since these particles are negatively charged. They have no mass. Um, yeah, they are negatively charged. It's basically the perfect opposite of protons, particles that are positively charged. So, with that in mind, we know that the, we now know that the atomic mass is equal to basically everything, all the particles that we have in the nucleus of an atom, proton plus neutron. The atomic number is equal to proton, if the element is an ion. Since um, the atomic number would always be equal to proton if the element is an ion, such that um, you might want to recall the definition of what an ion is. Um, an ion is defined by an atom that doesn't have um, a balanced ratio on the number of protons and neutron. Uh, I'm sorry, protons and electrons. Um, they're not balanced. So this is equivalent to an ion. If there are more protons than electrons in an atom, it's called a cation. While um, the opposite, such that... Um, electrons are more than the number of protons, uh, the ion would be considered specifically an anion. So that's it. Um, if the atomic number is, I mean, if the atom is, or the element is a neutron, or if it's neutral, actually, not neutron, I'm sorry. Um, if the element is neutral, that means, uh, in other words, the proton is equal to the number of electrons that means um yeah the element is neutral and the atomic number in that sense is equal to the proton which is also equal to the neutron that's all um radioactivity radioactivity um deals with emission of energetic particles of an atom unstable elements um usually tend to have what we call radioactive eating and if the ratio of protons and neutrons are not equal, the element becomes unstable. So, I stated earlier that um, an element is an ion if the ratio of protons to electrons are not equal to each other. In this um, sentence, I'm sorry, this one, uh, the ratio of protons and neutrons, if they're not equal, the element becomes an unstable element. This process of decay happens until the atom's neutron makes its atom stable. So, there are three types of radiation. Uh, first would be called the alpha particles. Second would be called would be called the, the beta particles, and third would be the gamma rays. Um, so imagine that this is an illustration of the radioactive atom, and in it. 
our particles. Um, I don't exactly recall the entire definition from this illustration. However, um, this is directly copied from um, my teacher's lecture, our chemistry teacher's lecture. So for nuclear reaction, um, it mainly happens in the nucleus, hence the, hence the adjective nuclear. So I won't be explaining much on fusion and fission, but it's important to know them as relevant with the term nuclear reaction. So we have here um, the usual illustration of an element in the periodic table. Um, of course, this x variable would be the element. The a would be the atomic mass, while the subscript z would be the number of protons, or in other words, the atomic number. So also might want, you also might want to know uh, this useful piece of information. Uh, C stands for carbon, CA stands for calcium. Now, for alpha, uh, I'll be enumerating, explaining um, actually five, I'm sorry, yeah, five types of radioactivity, if I'm not wrong. There isn't um, a specific title on this table, but if this lesson, uh, if this table is pretty relatable to what you're studying right now in grade 11 chemistry, uh, it's pretty good actually. Let's start with the first one, um, alpha decay. It's defined by the loss of an alpha particle. Um, the type or the illustration would be this. Um, it's basically, uh, the A would stand for the alpha particle and of course it has four um, as the atomic mass and the atomic number would be two. Uh, in the periodic table in real time uh, this could also be translated as helium. It has an actual atomic mass of four and an atomic number of two. Hence this one. Uh, alpha decay has the lowest penetration strength and it has uh, consequently the highest ionization power. You could already include that based on these definitions, um, penetration strength and ionization power, they, they are inverses of each other. That would um, be applicable to the definition of gamma ray. Gamma ray basically has the opposite of what alpha decay, I'm sorry, gamma decay of. Gamma decay is basically the opposite of alpha decay in the sense that if alpha decay has the lowest penetration strength, gamma decay would, hi would have the highest number of penetrative strength. And the alpha decay would have the highest ionization power. The gamma decay would have the lowest. So that's it. Um, for beta decay, of course, um, in the Greek alphabet, this symbol is beta, literally beta. Nothing more, nothing less to say about that. Um, it's the loss of a beta particle. The mass is negligible since, as you can see here, the atomic mass is zero. So this is the beta particle. Loss of one, um, one particle in the atomic number. For, so for example, um, given that you have carbon, that has an atomic mass of 14 and an atomic number of 6. Um, it turns into nitrogen such that um, the atomic mass is still the same, but then the at atomic number um, increased by 1. So coming from nitrogen back to carbon, um, that um, occurrence or dilemma happens in real time if a better particle a beta particle intervenes to it so basically seven minus one is six right so that's it that's all that you need to know it's pretty basic logic but it's going to be pretty challenging to digest in the context of this lesson on radioactivity so i, st I stated earlier that um 
the gamma decay, gamma decay is pretty opposite with the alpha decay in terms of the number of penetration and high and ionization power. Um, the main definition for gamma decay is that it has no mass. Uh, it's been definitely not a particle, so it has no effect on the nucleus. I stated earlier that electrons uh, don't have any value. Um, they're just basically electrons. They make um, an atom negatively charged. They make it an, uh, an ion if um, the number of electrons uh, become more than the number of protons. But then um, in this context for gamma decay, um, it's basically written as this one. So the gamma, the Y value, the Y symbol in the Greek alphabet would stand for gamma and there would be zero at the atomic number, zero at the atomic mass. Another um, fun fact though is that for gamma decay, um, one of its, uh, one specific element, cobalt-60, um, it's used as treatment for cancer. If I'm not mistaken, um, it's one of the chemo drugs that are used in uh, hospitals right now. So yeah. Um, for example, uh, given this, if I'm not mistaken, letter U in the periodic table is called uranium. Uh, given that we have a gamma ray, uh, a gamma decay that would happen, what is the um, product? If, this, if these are the reactants, what would be the product? Of course, uh, it would be the same. Nothing would change. Uh, that's basically the nature of gamma decay. Nothing happens at all. There is no effect on the nucleus. There is no effect on what constitutes the atomic mass, which is basically proton plus electron, I'm sorry, proton plus neutron, and what constitutes the atomic number, which in the context of an atom that is not an ion, uh, the proton isn't um, affected in any way. A proton is still um, logically part of a nucleus. So in the second example, uh, as you can see here, uh, Actually, I've already written the answer. It's still gamma decay since nothing really changed. It's still uh, thorium. TH stands for thorium, if I'm not wrong. Anyways, uh, let's move on. Uh, positron emission. Um, what we have to know in this is that um, we have an electron that has an atomic mass of 0 and an atomic number of 1 positive one. So basically, you convert a proton into an, in a proton that's located in a nucleus, as always, turn it into a neutron. So for example, as you can see here, we have oxygen, atomic number of eight, atomic mass of 15. It turns into nitrogen, whose atomic number is seven, and the atomic mass is 15. If you put a positron emission, um, this is actually the perfect reactant that makes the product what it actually is. Since 7 plus 1 is 8, um, 15 plus 0 is still 15. So, yeah. This is an example. This example is basically an oxygen undergoing proton emission. So, um, theoretically, wait, I'll just mention about this that I'm going, that I'm, that I was about to say later, uh, for electron capture, um, it's basically the drawing of an electron into an atom's nucleus. Uh, we have this illustration, um, electron, the atomic mass would not change at all. I mean, uh, yeah, it would not change at all. And the atomic number would be minus one. Uh, the emitted energy is in the form of x-ray. So in this example, um, 
apologize i'm not really that um i haven't really memorized much elements in the periodic table so let's just say this is hg and given we have an electron capture particle um the atomic mass would change, would still be 201 however the atomic number would change 80 minus 1 would be 79 the atomic number of 79 corresponds to au or aurum i think that's the old word for gold i'm not sure anyways um and now i'm about to say uh what i initially wanted to say earlier um electron capture is in theory the same as beta decay as you can see here uh hang on we just copy paste the model for electron capture as you can see here uh the there is no change in the atomic mass but there is a minus one for the atomic number um, they have the same uh, illustration, the same models. Uh, what makes it different, according to my teacher in chemistry, is that uh, for beta decay, usually this symbol is located in the reactant side, part of the um, equation. What I mean by equation is uh, this kind of thing. Um, usually you have an element here plus the type, uh, the radioactive particle, and uh, the product. Basically, these are the, the reactants. Uh, this kind of um, equation is more relevant in the context of uh, the keywords absorbs. And uh, I'll show you another equation that corresponds to the keyword uh, decays. Basically, we have the product here, then the reactant or the element, initial element, plus uh, the radioactive particle that um, made together with the element what the product is so yeah um that's basically the difference for between beta decay and electron capture for beta um the symbol is located in the reactant side of uh an equation for electron capture it's usually in the product side of the equation that might be quite unclear you know in a way um but even in that sense, I don't think there's any much restriction. Beta decay, electron capture, they are basically the same. If not same in all aspects. So this is um, basically the summary of everything I showed you earlier. Uh, for alpha decay, um, the, for the atomic mass, that would be the letter A. And the Z would be the atomic number. Decrease by 4, decrease by 2. In this context, for beta decay, um, the atomic mass remains unchanged. The atomic number would increase by 1 in this context, in the context of this um, expression. For gamma decay, uh, the, atomic, not, the atomic mass still remains unchanged as well as the atomic number. It's pretty easy to remember gamma decay. You can associate it with both the atomic number and mass being unchanged. For positron emission, uh, it's basically the opposite of beta decay and electron capture. Since um, you know that the electron capture is the same as beta decay in a certain way, uh, you could say that positron emission is the opposite of both of them. So for positron emission, uh, the atomic mass remains unchanged and the um, atomic number would decrease by 1.
in the context of this expression. So, um, I think we could um, make some one one specific conclusion from this table. Out of the five, one of them uh, has or contrib contributes to a change in the atomic mass. That would be the alpha decay. The rest, uh, the the atomic mass would remain unchanged, as you can see here. That goes for beta decay, gamma, positron emission, and electron capture. But as for alpha decay, there is a change in the atomic mass. Also, there's also um, a few more things that you have to know. Uh, this is what I basically showed you earlier. Uh, uh, I asked my teacher about um, if these were correct. Um, he said it was. They were um, correct in a more sensible way. But I'll talk about it more later. Um, for the proton, um, it's basically equal to one atomic mass and one atomic number. Since uh, the proton is actually equal to um, the amount of atomic number, the amount in atomic numbers. And uh, it is one of the building blocks that constitutes a an atomic mass. Hence, uh, this illustration could also be called as hydro, um, sorry, yeah, hydrogen. Since in real time, in the periodic table, uh, hydrogen has one atomic mass and one atomic number. While the neutron uh, has no change in the atomic number, since uh, the atomic number is equal to protons and is equal to electrons in the context that um, the atom is not an ion, right? So for neutron, it doesn't play any um, part in defining the value of the atomic number. It plays a value in um, defining the number of atomic mass since the atomic mass is equal to neutron plus proton, basically all the particles that are in the nucleus. So um, let's start with this. For the case, um, the keyword decay, um, the new element would, uh, or the product would have an arrow here. There would be an arrow here and the type of radioactive decay, whether it's alpha or beta or um, positron emission or uh, gamma decay, any of these. And you add it with the initial element, the reactant. So that goes for the case. As for absorbs, uh, we have the reactant element here, which is um, added together with the type of radioactive decay. So it's either we put um, alpha decay, beta decay, or in other words, electron capture, uh, gamma decay, or positron emission. Then we put uh, the product here, the final element or the result from these two reactants. So yeah, um, let's um, start doing sample problems. Um, it's pretty long, as you can see here. I'm thinking of making a part two for this video, but for now, let's answer as much as we can while not making the video too long as much as possible. Start with number one. So given we have AR, I am assuming that, um, I hope I'm not wrong, the element is called argon and it absorbs 
a beta particle. As you can see here, reactant plus uh, the particle is equal to the product. This is the system for absorbs, as you can see here. So, um, sorry, the atomic mass is 37. So nothing changed. 37 plus 0 is still 37. Uh, 18 minus 1 would be 17. I hope you have you. I hope you have your periodic tables with you. Um, you might need it. Um, you need to find the specific element that corresponds to a specific atomic number. So, in this case, uh, 17 is Ci or Cl. I'm sorry. Uh, this is chlorine, if I'm not mistaken. This is the answer for number one. For number two, uh, as you can see here, 251 became 247. Of course, um, based on what we're seeing right now, uh, we have something like this. This is decay. An element is, the, the element over here is decaying. So, 251 minus 247, that would be 4. And 98 minus 96 would be 2. This is an alpha particle. This is the final answer. The element is undergoing alpha decay to become this. But for some reason, the element did not change. The name of the element itself did not change. Weird observation. Right, let's move to number three. By the way, uh, I have to write here alpha decay. For number one, it's beta decay. For number three, we have here uh, beta decay, actually. Or electron capture. Choosing from the two of them. Uh, hang on, I need a few seconds. I'll just recall um, what my teacher said about the definite difference between alpha decay, I'm sorry, between beta decay and electron capture. Alright, I think I can see now. Uh, the element is... Sorry, uh, for this nuclear reaction, it's actually beta decay, not electron capture. For the reason that... Um, the, this symbol is at the product side of the nuclear equation or reaction. Um, if it's electron capture, this symbol should be at the left side. Probably in absorbed uh, nuclear reaction scenarios. But for number 3, uh, 42, it's still 42, 42 minus 0 is still 42, uh, 19 minus 1. Let's say 19 plus 1, would be, that would be 20. Because 20 minus 1 would be 19. That's how we do arithmetic in this lesson. It's pretty um, eerie or odd in a certain way, but you'll get used to it one day. It's pretty easy to get used to it. So this is calcium. That's the final answer. For number 4, Francium-235, 
2, 1, 2, decays by alpha emission. So we have the keyword decay, so the equation would be something like this, such that uh, Frenchum is located here. Uh, by the way, um, if this is the name of the element and whatever is whatever number is written beside it, separated by a dash, would be the atomic mass. So in the periodic table, the Frenchum is 87. And so if we put alpha emission for alpha decay, the symbol would be like this, right? And 2, 1, 2, um, ha, ha, what's the number that if we add with, two, with number 4, I'm sorry, um, let me reword it. Adding number adding the number four with which quantity what number would result to it to get two hundred twelve? Uh it's basically two hundred eight since two hundred eight plus four is two hundred twelve. Uh eighty five plus two is eighty seven. Eighty five atomic number of eighty five at the periodic table would be A T or astatine, if I'm not mistaken. So let's say, um, this is a bonus question by the way, uh, let's say that, I'm sorry, instead of decay, it absorbs. The um, nuclear equation template would look like this, in the sense that uh, Francian would be here. Same, 212 atomic mass, 87 atomic number. And like this. We get... Gold. Or AU, Aurum. I hope you can um, ponder the difference between them. If if francium decays by alpha emission, this is what we get. If francium, the same francium element absorbs by alpha emission, this is what you get. Right. For number 5, phosphorus 32 decays by beta emission. So let's write here phosphorus. Atomic number is 15. Atomic mass is 32. Uh, the K, so the, the template would look like this, such that the beta particle, the beta decay or emission particle would be located here, and the result or the missing value would be this. I think this is sulfur by the atomic, by the, by the abbreviation S, this is sulfur. Right, for number six, fluorine 18. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be FL or F, I'm not, I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, they create the case by positron emission. Uh, the symbol for positron emission is like this one. So we write here the symbol for po for positron emission. And what do we get? Eighteen plus zero is eight, still eighteen. Uh, nine plus nine minus one is eight. Eight plus one is nine. That's how we check. So an element of atomic number of eight is oxygen. This is the final answer. Actually, what I'm what I'm boxing right now, the lemons that I that I box uh, they're, they're actually not final answers but what matters is that you complete you've completed the nuclear reaction or equation right for number seven krypton 76 absorbs a beta particle so the keyword is absorbs beta particle we get something like this so krypton kr atomic mass 76 atomic number is 36 uh, so absorbs since because the word problem says uh, the element uh, 
absorbs the, a specific um, particle. It would look like this. Such that beta particle would be put here. And the result would be 76, 37. I'm sorry, 35. 35 at, uh, atomic number would be Br or brom bromine. If I'm not wrong, in terms of um, saying how you're supposed to say the element and what ele what that element actually is, coming based from the abbreviation, uh, let's move on to number eight. Aluminum twenty seven. Aluminum has an atomic number of thirteen. And absorbs. So we have a chassis like this. Alpha particle would be uh, written as this. And what's the result? 27 plus 4 is 31. Atomic mass of 31. Atomic number of 15. 15 atomic number is nitrogen in the periodic table. Right, let's proceed to number 9. Nitrogen, 14. Um, the atomic mass is 14. Atomic number would be 7. Absorbs an alpha particle and emits a proton. So this, we actually have uh, two particles um, going on in this scenario. First, uh, the, the element nitrogen-14 absorbs an alpha particle and emits a proton. So first, uh, let's just write um, Actually, wait. Hang on. Because uh, this is how we write it, usually. Um, since the proton is written as like this, and the alpha particle is written like this. Uh, we put the proton here, and this is the missing value. So given 14 plus 4, that would be 18. Uh, of course, the atomic mass altogether should be 18, and for the atomic number, it should be 9. But given that uh, it also emits a proton, the element won't be... Uh, based on these uh, values. So obviously, we subtract both the atomic mass and atomic number by 1. So we get 17 and 8. That would be oxygen. So that's an equation. Okay. Uh, this is a proton. Alpha particle would be that. Let's move on to number, actually, yeah. this is another worksheet on radioactivity. Uh, I found this randomly from the internet. Um, I don't own this. I acknowledge that it's um, the property of the person who made this. And yeah. Let's actually um, try finishing this in the next video. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today. Uh, I'll continue the next video shortly after this.